Taking hydrocodone for the first time, Norco's. Uh, I've taken hydrocodone before. I've shared about it before. It was a drug that it didn't didn't do what I thought it would do necessarily. And I ended up liking the drug probably more than what I should have liked the drug. And this is what it was like when I took hydrocodone uh, for the first time. If you are struggling with addiction, I got links below to NA. Reach out for help because it does get better. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Love to have you along for the journey. What's up guys, my name is Eric and I'm a recovering cocaine alcoholic addict. I have done a lot of other drugs before in my life because, well, let's face it, we as addicts do a lot of drugs. I mean, that's the reality of it. And hydrocodone is no exception. Pills are no exception, especially when it comes to opiates. Uh, I always looked at opiates as something I wasn't too worried about because like my dad was a doctor and you know, you're supposed to respect this medication and it's a painkiller and you only use it when you're in pain. And the first time that somebody ended up giving me hydrocodone, uh, I ended up taking half a pill. And if you don't know, I mean, hydrocodone comes in a big pill. Norco's come in a big pill. So I broke it in half and I ended up taking half of this. And all I can really remember is the first thing that I felt was one, it was a huge boost of energy, man, dopamine rush, boost of energy, positive mood and no pain. And I felt like I could go, go, go. I felt like the Energizer Bunny. It was almost like cocaine in a pill form which was really weird because when you think of heroin and you think of opiates and stuff, you think of people just kind of passed out, drugged out. But this drug actually energized me. It gave me, it just put me in the, uh, an amazing mood. Of course, that's the dopamine rush. And you think all of a sudden you found this miracle drug. Not only do, do I not feel any pain, I'm in a great mood. I'm super active. I, I can move. I can talk. I'm, I'm a lot more chatty. I'm a lot more talkative. And it boosts all your serotonin, your dopamine. Everything is just sky high. And... That is where the addiction truly kicks in. And as an addict, especially when you're in an active addiction, you don't really pay attention to signs like this that, hey, man, when you take something, you have that, wow, this feels good feeling. It goes to show you how addicted this drug is, is because we as addicts are looking always for that constant high. And yeah, it is something that is prescribed to you for pain. And did I feel any pain in my body? I didn't feel any pain whatsoever. Um, I felt actually my feet felt good. I felt like I could walk forever. My muscles, there was no soreness, uh, mood and attitude was phenomenal. Very upbeat, very positive. Um, just wasn't exhausted or tired at all. Uh, I felt like I could take on the world and I, there was times that I would take, you know, a couple different hydrocodones throughout the day, uh, throughout a week span, especially when I was working because I was on my feet a lot and talking to people a lot. And it just put me in what I would call like this good zone. But that's what addiction is. And I was abusing this drug and I can see how easily addictive it can be because when you start feeling so good like this, one of the first things is that you don't realize is like that mental withdrawal that you don't want that feeling to go away. You wake up the next day and you don't realize that you hit like a dopamine drop and you're a little bit depressed and you start thinking, man, maybe I should just take another one of those and I'll just feel better. And you do. And that is literally that addiction starting to grow, that, that tolerance starting to grow of, of what it is to become truly obsessed with a drug. I mean, my drugs of choice was alcohol and cocaine. And so, yes, I loved uppers. I loved drugs that made me feel good and gave me energy just like cocaine did. And that's what Norco and Hydrocodone did. Uh, it made me feel good. It gave me this uplifting, like, lift inside. And that's where I kind of realized how dangerous this drug was. I had a lot of friends that were addicted to this drug. Uh, and they're chewing this stuff like candy. I mean, I, I didn't understand. I mean, even I, my addiction never went to the extent that I would just put it in my mouth and swallow it or put it in my mouth and chew it up and swallow it. Uh, I would literally put it in my mouth and take it like you would medication, put it in my mouth and drink water with it. But I would watch friends just go through just packages of this stuff. And it's amazing because you go through, I mean, I, I have friends that are going through four or five pills a day. I mean, you're going through a bottle you know, in like 10 days and you just keep chewing on them and popping them and popping them. And it's kind of like chasing that dragon, chasing that high. You don't want to lose it. And now all of a sudden your tolerance is built up. So of course it takes more and more of the drug to get the same effect. And what do we want? We want that same effect, if not better. And that is when you are addicted. That is when you become obsessive. Uh, hydrocodone, uh, opiates, I know are a very addictive drug. I've experienced some of it. Uh, thankfully, I never got to the point that I was extremely addicted. It was a drug that I was going through massive withdrawals from. Uh, I know people that have been fighting on and off all their life to get off of these drugs because the withdrawals of these drugs, not necessarily deadly, but they are painful. I mean, you have restless legs, you have shortness of breath, you have hot, cold flashes, you have constipated, you have just pain in your body. You have all the mental withdrawals going on and it is going through insanity literally to get sober from these drugs. 
I mean, if you're out there struggling and you understand what I'm talking about and you felt those highs and you fiend for those highs, I mean, reach out for help. I mean, one of the best ways to get sober is let everybody around you know that you're an addict. And they already know. Believe me, even if you're a pill popper, I mean, people know. They see you there's constantly popping pills. They see the guy show up with the envelope or with the package handing it to you. And they know your obsession behind it, especially when you don't get it of seeing you going through like these flu-like symptoms and in agonizing pain needing this. So if you are out there struggling, I mean, reach out for help. Tell everybody you're an addict. Uh, down below, I have the links to NA. Reach out to NA. Find yourself some help. Uh, there's inpatient, outpatient rehabs. And that's what it's about, man. It, it, when you actually break free of your addiction, that addiction's always there. That obsession's always there. It's always on your mind. But your life becomes much more than it was just getting high. And I will tell you this. Being sober is one of the greatest gifts in the world. I enjoy and love my life now. Where before, my life was a prison that I didn't even realize that I was living in because I was obsessed and needed something in my life, but I thought it was my choice and it was never my choice. It was my desire, my obsession, my addiction that ran everything. So if you are struggling out there, reach out for help. I, I diagnosed with ADHD, PTSD, GAD, MDD. I lost a wife and a father to suicide, a recovering cocaine alcoholic addict. And I like to share just to let everybody out there know that they're not alone and what you're going through, it does get better and it's worth not giving up because it's one day at a time, but those days are pretty amazing.